Welcome back, I'm Chris Richter, great to have you here. If you haven't already checked out the courses that I've got on the Moodle LMS and some other courses on online education as well, please have a look in the comments, check those out. Like, subscribe so you can keep up to date on what's happening with the latest videos. But today we're going to have a look at creating quality graphics images for your education content. One of the things that I've seen many people struggle with is creating some graphics, putting it in their content, in their learning management system. Then when they go to look at it on different size screens, they go, oh no, it looks pretty ordinary. It looks all pixelated, looks horrible. It isn't quite what you expected and you don't know what to do with it to make it better without making the files absolutely ridiculous huge sizes. So we're going to have a go at a little bit of an experiment. I'm going to show you a couple of different ways of exporting your content. Uh, your images from Adobe Illustrator that you may have designed and putting them into a learning management system and look at the different versions of them and what quality is produced by those different graphics. So let's start with a very simple graphic. This is it. It's just a, you know, one, two, three, some description, descriptions of some numbered items that are a typical thing you might have in your content that you'd like to have there graphically presented. And we want to put that in our content. First of all, let's have a look at the artboard for this image. If we go to edit artboard on the right hand side you can see that the width is 1280 by 800. Most computer screens, uh, the typical average computer screens, uh, there really isn't one because it varies depending on the device. Whether it's a computer, whether it's a tablet, whether it's a mobile phone, it all varies so there isn't actually a set typical size anymore. So I've created this at 1280 by 800 purely to show you what it will look like on uh, a large, on, when it's on a large computer screen, you'll see how the scale changes when we resize it to make it larger. You can start with a larger image, but when you export it, it will be a larger file size as well, which can start to add up considerably. There's a few different formats that we can export our content in. They are PNG, JPEG, SVG, and a collection of others, but they're the three that we're going to look at. I'm going to show you the difference in file size and the difference in importing them into your content and what it looks like when it's resized or rescaled. We're now going to choose File, Export As, and export it in our first format. So Export As, and we're going to use it as a PNG file. And this one will be 300 dpi, so we can compare the different qualities of images. So when we export, we choose the resolution 300 dpi, and we just say OK. We're now going to go File, Export, Export As. This time we're going to change it to 150 dpi, and export again. When we choose, here we've got medium, 150, or pixels per inch. Okay, then we choose File, Export again, Export As, and this time we're going for 72. So this will be 72 dpi. This is all as a PNG. So Export, 72, and OK. File, Export As. This time we're going to choose a different file format, and we're going to choose JPEG. And we're going to leave it at 72 dots per inch. So I'll put in there 72 dpi. And there we go, 72 dpi. That's fine, OK. And the other one we're doing is File, Export, As. And this time we're going to choose SVG. And that would just be an SVG format. We'll leave Convert to Outlines as that. Uh, layer names, its IDs, that's all fine, we'll just go OK. So we've now exported this graphic as multiple file formats. We're going to jump to our learning man management system, load them in and have a look at what the differences are. First of all, let's have a look at the different sizes of our images in terms of file size to see what we're working with before we put it into our content. You notice that our 72 dots per inch or pixel per inch JPEG is 169K. Our 72 dpi, pixel per inch, PNG is 32K. So that's a considerable drop down going from a JPEG to a PNG. And that is mainly because a PNG has a transparent background. So all the transparent background parts of the image are accounted for differently than a JPEG, which counts each color uh, or each shade of each pixel. 
uh, for the whole image. The PNG has all these transparent ones where it can sort of optimize how it displays that. So it can reduce the file size. If we go to our 150, it goes to 75K. Our 300 is 155K. That's our original Illustrator file, which is 257K, so we can ignore that. Our default PNG that we exported was 155, but we'll leave that one at the moment. And jump to our SVG file, which is 61K, and it's classed as an XML file. So they're the files we're working with, the SVG, the three PNG files here, and the one JPEG. So I'm going to put all of those into our learning management system for you, and we're going to have a look at what they look like when they are at their normal display size, and see what happens. Here we go. I've now taken those images and put them into our learning management system, so we can have a look at what they look like at their normal size. So... First of all, our 72 pixel per inch JPEG at 1200 by 800. So this actual image size is size to 1200 by 800. And if we go and inspect this, we can have a little look here. And it's actually rendered it slightly lower uh, than what the size is, uh, purely because my screen isn't quite big enough to display that. So it has dropped it down a little bit. But you can see the quality of this is quite low regardless and not really quite usable. 72 should be usable, but it's not really. Uh, if we jump now to our PNG at 72 pixels per inch, still at 1280 by 800, you can see there it's a little bit grainy. It's not quite clear and nice and crisp, but we are only at 32 kilobytes. So comparing a JPEG to a PNG, can be quite a dramatic difference and much smaller size, uh, depending on the content. If it's a photo, it will be different again. But uh, for this graphic, that's what it works out to. If we now jump to our 150 pixel per inch PNG, when we exported it, we just said to make it 150 pixels and export the artboard. It automatically exported that to 2668 by 1668. So it scaled that up in relation to the 72 DPI or PPI, pixel per inch, uh, scaled that up to a bigger image size, which obviously means the quality is better, but the file size is also higher. So this quality is nice, crisp and clear, and it's quite a sensible uh, size to export your content in, and quite practical. And at 2668, it fits most screen sizes. Uh, obviously, it fits this one, it certainly fits this screen size, but it uh, could be different on your screen if you've got a much bigger screen. Now, if I jump to the 300 pixel per inch, yes, it is clear, very, very clear. And our sizing for that has jumped up to 5334 with 155K. So it's starting to get you know, a reasonable size file, but not overly big. Still acceptable to use in your content. So they're the different ones to choose from. Uh, the last one, our SVG. Now, it exported that at 300 by 116, which is quite okay. It's quite usable. If we zoom in on that, you can see that it's crystal clear anyway, because SVGs do that, because they're scalable vector graphics and they will stay crisp and clear the whole time, no matter what size you have them at. So that's the images uh, exported at their default size that they come out at, uh, based on how Illustrator will resize or will export each of those images. So you can see just from that, if you were jumping in to use this straight away and weren't sure what to use, definitely the 150 pixels per inch coming out at that size, uh, that pixel size and at that file size is quite acceptable. So 150 is probably the pick out of those other than the SVG one, which is only 61K and can size to any size. What we're going to do next is resize all of this image to be 100% so that they fit the full width of this screen. And you can see what the quality changes to and uh, which ones might be the better option if we go to 100%. I've now scaled our graphics to be 100% full width that just means that the image itself the actual graphic if i show you there the outside of the physical graphic is as wide as the screen will allow or as this application will allow inside this browser so there's a bit of padding that's automatically there but it's as big as it will go for this screen size let's have a look at the quality of this image now you can see it started to break up a bit now why is it breaking up let's go to inspect and have a look at our graphic and you'll see there that the Intrinsic size, which is the actual size of the graphic, is 1280 by 800. 
and the rendered size is 1286 by 804. So it's a little bit bigger, the actual rendered size, which is why it's starting to break up. So if you're intending your graphics to be used on larger sizes than what your actual pixel size is of the image, you need to, well, you've got a problem there. It will not look as good because it will start to break up and the, the pixels will start to become really obvious and it won't look crisp and clear. So that's on our 72 pixel per inch JPEG. If we look at our 72 pixel per inch PNG at the same size, it's basically done the same thing. So it's resizing itself just a fraction larger. So 1286 instead of 1280, it's a little bit. So you can see it doesn't take much for it to start to break up. But let's look at our next image, which is crystal clear. And this is the 150 pixel per inch PNG, 75K. So we've gone from 32K to 75K. And the quality of the image is considerably better at this size. Now notice that uh, when I check this one, the actual image size, because we exported at 150, it's changed it to 2668 by 1668, which means that this scale is still smaller than the screen size. So it, it's, it's actually reduced the image size to fit into this. So on a bigger screen, it can go all the way to 2668 before it starts to break up and look poor quality. So 150 um, pixel per inch PNG is actually quite okay. And the size isn't too bad. 75K is, is quite acceptable. Let's jump to our 300 pixel per inch. Again, it's crystal clear and it's going to be. If we inspect that and have a look, you can see there that the actual size of the graphic is 5334 by 3334. It's being downscaled down to 1284. So the quality is still going to be really good. And our last one, which is our SVG, the original size of that was actually 300 by 116. And it's a little bit irrelevant that in a way, but you can see here that it's rescaled it um, up to 1284 by 498, uh, which is a massive change. But you'll notice that the quality is always there all the time, no matter what size we go to with it, because it is an SVG, which is a scalable vector graphic. So just from that simple example, you can see there there's two things. One is that an SVG is obviously a more practical solution for this type of graphic which will scale up and scale down. So if we do decide to, to show this on a mobile device, uh, all of them will scale down quite okay. Uh, you'll still find that this one here, uh, although it's showing a little bit bigger because it hasn't got the white space around the outside, it will still be clear no matter what size device you're using. Uh, all of the others will scale down quite acceptably. So going down is okay. Going back up is where the real issue is. So comparing that to our file sizes, just as a final thing, this one is 61K. So 61K is quite okay at for an SVG that will scale to any size. If we go back to our 300 DPI at 155, um, 61 to 155 is quite a big difference in file size. The 150 is down to 75K compared to 61, so they're close. So I would quite happily recommend 150 pixels per inch for most graphics is quite okay, is quite acceptable. Keeping them around that 2000, uh, 2200, 2400 mark is quite okay as well, which will give you a reasonable 60 to 75K image file size, or alternatively go for an SVG, depending on how complex it is, and the file size of that will stay down and also allow you to rescale to any, uh, any screen size that you like. So hopefully that's given you a bit of an idea on what the differences are and what it is you're looking for and you need to find to get that quality image inside your learning management system and inside your content that you're delivering. Obviously an SVG and a 300 DPI image can be used in print as well. So if you are aiming for print as part of your distribution for your content, Obviously, uh, keep the Illustrator file, export as 300 dpi for print, uh, export as SVG, or 150 if you're going on the web. Uh, 72 is okay, but you'll find that it's got to be quite a bit larger in file size uh, or pixel dimensions uh, to make it useful and practical. But 
have a play around with it, experiment with the sizes and see what you can do and what you can work out that works best for you. But certainly work out a system and a process that works uh, across the board for all of your courses you're developing and it will make your life so much simpler rather than playing around with all these different weird sizes and struggling to try and get things to work. Hope that's been helpful to you. Check out the courses down the bottom on Moodle and other LMSs and online education content. I'm Chris Richter. I'll see you again soon.